interesting. I've always felt that uh, in the uh, early, late, uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, Canadian and U.S. college coaches started to be um, brought into the NHL as assistant coaches with a lot of uh, professional guys that had played the game a lot and wanted a little bit more expertise. That. And they made a, a really a terrific contribution. I mean, when you go back to the, the early 80s, a lot of those guys you're talking about uh, with, the, with the U.S. programs, a lot, of, a lot of people in Canada, the same thing. Uh, they came into coaching staffs in the NHL. They brought a little bit of uh, science to the game. Uh, uh, fitness especially was the first emphasis. But it was really good to see that happen. And that really changed the game a great deal. You know, if you look at the game changing and evolving, there are key things that happened. And I think uh, people forget that in the early 80s, college coaches coming into the NHL really started to change uh, the NHL game and the professional game. And, of course, it all filters down. Yep. No. Okay, Wally, what's up? Well, I I just wanted to mention that Hell's still coaching uh, a high school t- a team. Tom Malloy, who's coached all over the world and uh, no. worked with famous people you know, r- Russian coaches, and uh, um, he's still coaching uh, female hockey, and uh, we're really actively involved, more at the minor hockey level, but Dave, you've been there, done that. Growing up, uh, I could tell a hundred thousand stories about you in your high school days, coaching high school sports and science and winning awards at that. But um, I just, you know, I really could start so many different places. But here you are, similar to all of us. Like Hal has written materials, like you have and I have, for our governing bodies and shared that out with coaches and that coaching education piece is something that we still continue to strive to do. Um, I'm really curious, Dave, where your life is at now, uh, coaching and working with in the KHL, uh, what you might have gleaned over the time and seen the game change, but tell us a bit about your job and <clears throat> what you're doing on a day-to-day basis with the teams in the K, uh, the team in the KHL. Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I feel really, uh, I coached in the KHL in two places. I coached in Magnitogorsk way back in 2005 through 2006. And then I coached again in a, couple, a year and a half there. Uh, they brought me in mid mid season, I think 2012 came into uh, Yaroslav and I coached there for the rest of that season and next season. So I've, got some experience that I really enjoyed. I found uh, Russian hockey really interesting. And it's, I'll, I'll take you back a bit. When I went over in 2005, 2006, I was the first North American to coach in Russia. So, um, and I had been in the NHL and college hockey and the national team. So I just did things the way I did things. You know, I accepted what I, I knew what I could change. I knew what I couldn't change. So I tried to go in and adapt to their program as much as I expected them to try to adapt to some things that I was doing. And it's interesting because in 2005, 2006, uh, the Russian hockey was still very, very Soviet hockey. Um, The game didn't resemble at all very much our game. It was really the old Soviet style game. When I came back later in 2013 uh, to Yaroslavl, I had seen a great, great change in the game. Uh, There was a lot more uh, North American influence into the way they were playing. And then now, as a, as a coaching advisor for uh, Yaroslav, um, I can really see now that, uh, and watching NHL games, uh, almost like watching the same game. Uh, you know, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, we seem to be the country adapting to them and taking from them. But since then, it's been the other way around. The Russians have have taken from our game and changed it a great deal. And uh, they're playing very much uh, the way the NHL teams play. So, you know, the game is constantly changing. You're correct on that. Uh, and there's always reasons why it's changing. And I think the reason it's changed so much in the last 25 years in the KHL is so many uh, Russian players have gone back to Russia, have started to coach or manage teams. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, they've brought in a lot of the things that they, as players, they learned in North America. And uh, 
the, the, the video work they do now is, is outstanding. Um, the, uh, the coaching has really, really improved. It's, there's some great coaches in Russia. Uh, the coaching staffs are much larger. Uh, they cover all the bases. And uh, I would say they're as detailed as an NHL team would be in terms of how they coach their teams and approach their preparation. So, you know, the game has really uh, uh, changed in a, in a great deal over there. In terms of the, the Russian game today, as I see it, um, you know, specialty teams, power play, PK are, are identical to what we do. And a lot of that, of course, has started way back. A lot of it started with the Czechs. I mean, the Czechs were probably the greatest teachers of the game. Uh, and that's where the Russians uh, uh, took a lot of things was from Czech hockey. But um, their power play PK is almost the same. Uh, their four checking game, you know, they've done the same thing we've done. Uh, there's a tendency now to drop a player back and have at least three players back. So teams play one, one, three, one, three, one. Uh, it's the same in Russia. Uh, you can take the red line out. So to, to adapt, more teams have gone with the safety of three back uh, on that, that, that layer of defense. So that's very similar. Uh, so the game is very, very similar. The only place where I see uh, real old Soviet hockey, I call it Soviet hockey because it was back in the, uh, the communist days, is on buildups or regroups. Like they like to play the quick regroup game, but when they can't, when teams are falling back and playing four to five back and really compact and there isn't much space, they go back and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of interchange of position. They bring the puck up, back pass it, just try to disrupt your gaps and those things. Just exact, well, if you look at the NHL power play breakout, that's the most common. It's the back pass where they take it up ice, back pass it, make your gap control much more difficult. They establish a lot of speed and then the speed meets your defense, which is not moving very quickly at the blue line and things can happen. They get an entry. So that, that idea on the, that's where it started. It started with the Russian buildups. They were the first ones to use the, the back pass, disrupt gap control and come at you with lots of speed. So that's the only part of the game that I think is still Soviet. Everything else, very North American and, uh, it's interesting uh, when you watch it on TV, it just strikes you right away like, wow, you know, these guys, the adaptation now for a player to go from the uh, KHL to the NHL is not a big step other than cultural. It's not a big step. Uh, tactically, it would be an easy move for a player to make that move and then go for North American players to go to play in Russia, the KHL. It's not difficult other than the rinks. Most of the rinks are still larger. There are a few that they, did make smaller when the IIHF uh, mandated uh, smaller ice surfaces for world championships, but most of the rinks there are still quite large. Dave, I've, I've got a question here. The um, You're talking about the Soviets, and I do remember how they regrouped. And uh, I, I never really thought of the NHL power play breakout as a regroup, but it uh the thing i remember most and i called it the jackhammer yep. they used to throw the puck back and immediately yep. touch it to the open sprinting stretching forward and yep. i always thought boy that's that's a that's a really good tactic that could be used today but watching the nhl today they're starting to plug up and back up and three back all the time and we we were at a game last night. They have it, the Crochow Classic, <clears throat> Dave, where the two uh, male and female college teams played each other at the Saddledome. Okay. And uh, both the U of C men's and the Mount Royal teams, they took that uh, power play breakout to another level. I I've never seen anything like it, and uh, they managed to gain gain entry. But I don't know that you can. Uh, the jackhammer anymore and uh, take advantage of stretching to get in behind. I've always thought, and, and if you could talk on this, the game hasn't changed. Uh, we haven't been able to take advantage of the red line. And uh, is there any way we can? Can I interject here, Wally? Go ahead, yeah. Well, Calgary played St. Louis the other day, and St. Louis flies the zone as soon as it looks like the D's getting the puck. And they got three breakaways on Calgary. Just totally went behind them, and the D, you know, wasn't alert. So 
that was the most uh, I've seen a team fly the zone and be successful with it. So that's something that's. Dave, the hybrid, yeah. hybrid icing. Yeah. Uh, last night, I was amazed. They just fired the puck out and it was a race for the puck and it wasn't called. Is that mm -hmm. existing in the KHL? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it's uh, uh, Tom's comments are interesting, too. I, I think, you know, we what happens is when you change rules, uh, coaching gets in the way, like taking out the red line um, has caused the game to be faster because players can build speed and maintain it longer to the far blue line, whereas before you could be an offside option and not all, at all available. So um, so the game is faster because of the red line. Um, and it, at, at times, it, it can give us a breakaway. There's, I mean, that shouldn't happen three times in one game. Calgary's coaching staff better look at that because that's ridiculous. Because most, most NHL teams now, uh, because of the red line being taken out, um, they, they like to play uh, neutral zone defense with at least three back. So the seams are, are, are tighter. It's harder to find those breakaway plays. Really, what the NHL game is, and same in Russia, if you the best skill and the most improved skill in our game today, in my opinion, is steering, the ability to steer uh, the attack on the forecheck. And if you watch a lot of Russian games, if you the game's taking place, and if you suddenly get a breakout versus a forecheck, if you freeze it, it's interesting because this rink is 100 feet wide, and there's nine players on one side of the ice. If you drew a line longitudinally down the middle of the rink, there would be nine players on half the ice. The other half the ice, I mean, you might as well uh, pave paradise and put up a parking lot because they don't use it very much. It's, I think the one thing that uh, the NHL game is, and it's, and it's in major junior too, is we want to push the puck up ice. So we stretch, post up, long indirect or direct pass, Bump it to the inside speed if it's there. If not, chip it behind and establish the four check. So we, we now have a game where we play a lot of our game from breakout to neutral zone against the four check. We play a lot of our game on half the ice. Uh, just watch a game sometime. Just freeze it every, so while, every time you see a breakout uh, against a four check, aggressive four check. And you'll see there's eight or nine guys on one side of the ice. So um, I'm waiting for somebody to be a little bit more um, – inventive or innovative, I guess is the word, and start to uh, come up with some ways to get more attacking width. Because our game, we just force it up into pressure, get it behind the pressure, and then we forecheck like hell. That is, I'm not saying every play, but that is a lot of it. Um, there's no question um, that when you change rules, uh, we adapt very quickly. Coaches are terrific at, at adapting, and, and that's what's happened, Well. In my opinion. Now, do in the in Russia are they adapting as as uh, in their game, or are they just waiting for and watching the NHL and adapting to just because the NHL does it? Oh, I I get the impression you're right on, Wally. I get the impression that uh, they're not going to change much, and of course, in that big wide rink to see all that space over there. Um, really, uh, I'll go back a bit. I think if you're going to try to uh, use that space you, to get uh, attacking width, it's that free defenseman is the guy who's got to come up and fill that side and give you an opportunity to to move the puck up the weak side of the ice. So that's what they're going to have to do. But, it, you know, playing up into pressure doesn't sound smart, but as long as you redirect, uh, use the indirect passes, which are very hard to defend, um, you can chip it behind, and I think it's a it's a safe way to get through the middle zone, and then establish speed on the four check. And um, so our game has become faster because of that tactic. It's a lot of long indirects, and guys are anticipating breaking hard through the middle zone. They know the guy's going to chip it, and off they go and they four check. So it's uh, and that's why goalies are so important because when they can play the puck, they they do help you sometimes break the four check. So. Um, it's really interesting, and I think they're just waiting for us to come up with a to show some uh, adaptation to that. I think the one thing I would say, if, if I was coaching again uh, anywhere, 
I would really work hard with my free defensemen being very, very active, anticipating and making sure as much as he can, he can't always, sometimes he won't be in position to do this, but as much as he can to support and uh, provide options to the weak side, but as well, the defenseman who's going to be steered, if he has enough separation, be more deceptive. Don't just accept the steer, skate into the steer, and then indirect it off the boards. You know, a change of direction, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and I think sometime, too, I don't know when, but, uh, uh, you know, soccer uses their goalie a lot now. Hockey has, too. But uh, I don't know. I think we should take that, uh, uh, that uh, what do they call it, the quadrangle behind the net? where the goalie can't leave it should take that out let the goalie play the puck i mean it's more exciting we need some excitement if they make a few mistakes maybe we'll get some more goals but you know i think it's uh, it's very interesting um that we haven't come up yet with ways to really and, and it's not so much tactical wally it's individual tactics you know it's just i i don't think sometimes we do enough to help the players understand